Good morning, Faith Bible Church. My name is Josh Gilchrist, and I am the resident pastor over the college ministry here at Faith Bible Church. But more importantly, as this young man in the tank next to me, this is Emery Levine, and today he is choosing to publicly proclaim and declare his faith in Jesus Christ through the act of baptism. Why do we baptize here at Faith Bible Church? It's a step of obedience that believers are called to do. In the New Testament, that was the pattern. Believers, um, well, before they were believers, they would repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And it's not something that saves a person. The, The spiritual work has already been done in the believer's life, but it is a public proclamation of the spiritual reality that's taken place in Emery's life as he is identified into Christ, his um, life, his death, burial, and resurrection as he's washed and cleansed from his sins. And so we're going to celebrate that today. Emery, are you ready to share your salvation story with us? I am. Um, And before I do that, I just have a few acknowledgments to uh, the people who have helped me along the way. Um, First of all, I want to thank whomever Uh, heated the baptistry. Thank you for that. Um, But I wanted to thank God for uh, the members of this church, the elders of this church, the college pastors and staff, uh, my friends and family that are here today. Uh, Thank you to Josh Gilchrist for meeting with me and discipling me. Uh, Thank you to Anson and Emily for um, being here for me in Spokane. Thank you to the McCulloughs and um, thank you to the Thursday night prayer group on West Badger and my parents for never ceasing to keep me in their prayers. Emery, could you please tell the church what your heart attitude toward God was like before he brought you to salvation? I, like many others, uh, was raised in a believing home, attending a faithful church. Uh, Hiding behind the facade of church attendance, a want of participation in taking the Lord's Supper, I called myself a Christian. As time went on and I entered middle school and high school, I grew closer to the world in sin while growing away from my heavenly father. I did not have any real desire to know the Lord, which is shown by Paul's writings in Roman, in writing in Romans 3.11. Even so, I maintained an outwardly Christian lifestyle, yet I did not have an actual relationship with God. Before I was saved, my, priori- my priorities lay in the complete wrong order. I was placing hope and identity in worldly man-made things. I was trusting in idols and leaning on my own understanding instead of putting my trust wholly in him and acknowledging him in all my ways, as Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say. Philosophies, social institutions, and creative beings, myself most of all, were at the center of my actions and intentions. I was unconcerned with the real truth of the gospel as my mind was consumed with temporal, temporal, eternally irrelevant pursuits. Sin had a practical and positional hold on me, and I was enslaved to it, as is shown in Romans 6, 6, and 3, 10. Emery, how did you come to understand your need for salvation? Uh, It wasn't until the summer of last year when God ultimately brought my idols crashing down around me. Though at the time my circumstances seemed to be the end of my selfish world, God was quick to show me that his ways are higher than mine, as we see in Isaiah 55, 9. After the final idolatrous domino fell, God reminded me of my Labor Day weekend spent here in Spokane at Church in the Park, and I knew in an instant that I had to leave my, my life behind and follow him. It was on the car ride home from the falling of that final domino when I was compelled to put my faith in Christ, and this time it was real. I recognized by those two contrasting worlds that I needed a savior. In Romans 7, 7, in Galatians 3, 19, and 24, God makes it clear that the law does not save us, but reveals to us our utter and absolute inability to save ourselves, and thus reveals to us our utter and absolute need for his grace. He started to turn my attention toward him, and he showed me that salvation comes only by his grace through faith, according to Ephesians 8, 2, 8, and 9. Because of this gift freely given, I have no grounds on which to boast of myself, but all the reason to praise him. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says that we are, brought, we are bought with a price. The holy, almighty, and everlasting God came into creation to humble himself in flesh and pay the total ransom for my sins. My life has been ransomed by Christ and by no other means. Through this... Sin only maintains a practical hold on me, having lost its positional hold to Christ. In John 14, 6, Jesus tells his disciples that no man comes to the Father but through him. Jesus' fulfillment of these promises is shown in John 19, 30, when he said, it is finished, and the price was paid in full. And Murray, what are you publicly proclaiming about Christ today as you come to be baptized, and how has he changed your heart and life? 
I'm professing that Christ is my Lord and my salvation. Baptism is first and foremost about God's faithfulness to me, superseding my faithfulness to him. I am professing that I have been united to, immersed in, and identified with Christ in his death and resurrection in order to walk in the newness of life, according to Romans 6, 3, and 4. From Romans 8, 9, 14, and 15, I know that God has given me belonging in him through adoption, being led by his spirit, so that I would cry out only to him. Moving forward with Jesus as the savior of your life, um, what's your new identity and purpose going forward? My identity is found only in Christ, and all, identi- all other identities must flow from Christ. Having been ransomed by the blood of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit, according to Ephesians 1.13, I am now a servant of Christ, and I find my purpose in living only for him. I'm called to walk in obedience to God, Peter says in Acts 5.29. Moreover, God didn't just save me from something, he saved me into something, the family of believers. John 13.35 calls me to love my brothers and sisters in Christ, that by this all men should know that I'm a Christian. Matthew 28, 18 and 1 Peter 3, 15 also call me to love the unsaved by making disciples of the nations and giving them a reason for my hope in Christ with gentleness and reverence. But above all else, I seek to glorify God with everything that I do. I think that David sums up the Christian's life perfectly in one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 40. David writes that the Lord heard his cry, brought him up from the pit of destruction, made his footsteps firm and put a new song in my mouth. David writes that blessed is the man that has made the Lord his trust and there is nothing to compare to God. David writes about proclaiming the Lord's glad tidings of righteousness, salvation, and truth. He writes about how how his iniquities overcome him, yet the Lord's faithfulness preserves him through it all. David acknowledges his affliction and need and recognizes the Lord as his help and deliverance. Are we ready to do this? (laughs) Do you publicly proclaim that Jesus is both your Lord and Savior? I do. Then it's my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.